Welcome to this talk. This work is about unbounded multi-party computation for learning with arrows. I'm Zheng Zhongjing from Johns Hopkins University. This work is joined with Prabhupada Anans, Abhishek Jain, and Julio Malavota. Multi-party computation is a multi-round protocol between several parties. Each party has some input xi, and the goal of the protocol is to have these parties to jointly compute some function f. For security, we request that at the end of the protocol, all these parties can only learn the output of the function f, and anything else about their inputs x1 to xn are hidden. Previously, there is a long line of works studying the round complexity of multi-party computation. And it is known that two rounds are both sufficient and necessary for MPC. Then a natural question is, what's the dream version of a two-round MPC protocol? First of all, the dream version should be in the plan model. It shouldn't require a trusted setup or a CRS. And it should satisfy the following unbounded parties property, which means the number of parties is not a priori bounded, or its first round message should not limit the number of parties that can be involved in the computation. For the second round message, it should satisfy the following ad hoc computation property. It requests that any subset of parties can join the computation. For example, let's say f is a function that is only about x1 and x3. And the first party holds x1, the third party holds x3. Then to jointly compute f, only the first party and the third party need to be involved in the second round. Finally, its first round message should be reusable. Namely, let's say the computation for some function f is finished, and there is some other function g that these parties want to jointly compute. Then, what uh, these parties need to do is not uh, generate a fresh first round message. Instead, they can reuse the original first round message for this new circuit g. In this work, we call the MPC that satisfies all these properties as unbounded MPC. Such a notion is in fact subsumed by the previous work of Ben Hamoda and Lin in 2020, where they constructed Mr. and NISC that satisfies all the properties we required. On the previous works, by Mercury and Wix in 2016, they construct two round MPC where the first round message is reusable. However, their construction is in the CRS model. And they don't satisfy our definition for unbounded MPC because we require the protocol to be in the planned model. More recently, the work by Anans, Jin, and Jing, and also by the work of Batusek, Garg, Mansley and the Mercury in 2020. They constructed reusable MPC in the plan model. However, in their construction, the first round message bound the number of parties can be involved in the computation. So they also doesn't satisfy our requirement for unbounded party computation. Then the only prior work that satisfies all the properties we require is the work by Benhamoda and Lin in 2020, where they show a construction of Mr. Nisk that satisfies all the properties we required. But their construction is from bilinear maps. And the bilinear maps are not post-quantum secure. So in this work, 
we study the following question. Can we construct unbounded MPC for learning with arrows? And uh, here is our result. We built the first two round semi malicious secure unbounded MPC in the plan model from learning with arrow. Now, I'm going to show you more technical details on how we achieve our result. Our key ingredient is the following attribute based secure function evaluation, or short as ABSFE, with public decryption property. Such an ABSFE with public decryption is a two party protocol between a sender and an authority. The authority holds some input X. Then in the first round, the authority generates some public key, key PK, which encodes this input X, and it sends it over to the sender. Next, both parties receive some common public circuit C. Then, the sender can use this public key PK and the circuit C to encrypt some message M and obtain some cipher text. On the authority side, he can also use his uh, private state and uh, this uh, public circuit C to generate some hint H. Finally, anyone with the ciphertext and the hint can decrypt to the message the sender encrypt if C of X equals to 1. We further request that the first round message which, which contains a public key is reusable. It means that after the protocol execution for some circuit C1, if both parties want to execute the protocol for some another circuit C2, then what they need to do is not to generate a fresh public key. Instead, they only need to reuse the original public key for the circuit C2. And we allow the both parties to reuse this public key as many times as they want. For security, we require both the sender security and the authority security. For the sender security, it means that if C of X equals to zero, then the message M is hidden from the authority. On the other hand, for the authority, we request that the public key and the hint H should reveal nothing else beyond C of X about his input X. Now let's assume we already have the ABSFE with public decryption property. How do we build an unbounded MPC protocol? Our starting point is any two-round MPC protocol pi. Note that we do not require any additional properties of this protocol pi. Then we use it to build the following unbounded MPC protocol. Our starting point is in fact a three round protocol, where in the first round, all these parties uh, doesn't do anything. Then in the second round and the third round, all these parties execute the original protocol pi. Then we will apply a round compression technique using the ABSFE with public decryption property. In this way, we can compress the second round and the third round to only one round and obtain a two round protocol. In more detail, instead of computing the second round message of pi in the third round, we couple the second round message function using a coupling scheme and output the coupled circuit with the first round message of pi in the second round. 
now we will encounter a problem. To evaluate this garbled circuit, we need to obtain the label of this garbled circuit. But how do we obtain the labels? So the idea is to use ABSFE with public decryption to deliver these labels. More specifically, we will have each party generate a public key which encodes their own input XI. And we have these parties to publish these public keys in the first round. Now, we have each party played the role as the sender of ABSFE. In this way, they can use ABSFE to encrypt the labels, where the function is set to be the first round of message function of Pi. To decrypt these labels, we also have each party plays the role as the authority of the ABSFE. So they can generate the hint where the function is also the first round message function of Pi. Now, after the second round, every party obtains this ciphertext and the hint of ABSFE, so we can use them to decrypt the correct labels for this garbled circuit and uh, compute the second round message function of Pi. And this completes the protocol. For more details, you can refer to our paper. In the rest of the talk, I will show you more details on the construction of ABSFE with public decryption. First of all, let me recall the homomorphic commitment scheme. In such a scheme, there is a commitment key K, which is a matrix, to commit a bit XI with the commitment key A, and the randomness RI, we compute A times RI plus XI times G, where this G is a gut get matrix, and the RI is a small matrix. Then, given any circuit F, one can do a homomorphic evaluation of F over the commitment and obtain a new commitment of F of X. And the randomness is RI RF. Note that this uh, new randomness RF can be deterministically commuted from RI. Given this homomorphic commitment scheme, our construction of ABSFE with public decryption is as follows. In the first round, we have the authority to generate the public keys, which contains the homomorphic commitment of XI. Then given the circuit F, both parties can do a homomorphic evaluation of this public key and obtain a new commitment of f of x. Note that the authority knows the randomness ri, so he can deterministically compute some rf, which is the randomness of the homomorphically evaluated commitment. Next, our key observation is that if you concatenate the matrix A with this homomorphically evaluated commitment, this new matrix has a trapdoor RF because the norm of RF is small. Moreover, the authority can compute the trapdoor RF. So on the center side, to encrypt the, a message M, we firstly sample an LWE secret vector S and an LWE noise vector E, and we compute S times AF plus E. And then we take a CDD extractor to extract enough randomness from the LWE secret vector S, and they use this uh, randomness to encrypt this message M. On the authority side, we sample a basis of the dual lattice that is specified by AF using its trapdoor RF.
to publicly decrypt the ciphertext, given the ciphertext and the hint. One can efficiently recover the LW secret S, since the hint is the basis of the dual lattice of AF. Next, once, the, once we know the LW secret vector S, we can recover the message M using the extractor. Finally, let me show you the key idea to prove the sender security. Recall that the sender security requires that if f, 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 if f of x equals to zero, then the message M encrypted by the sender should be hidden from the authority. To prove this, our key observation is that if f of x equals to zero, then the term uh, s times a f plus e, it becomes something close to s times a plus e1, concatenated with s times a plus e1 times rf, where this e1 is some coordinates of the LW noise e. Now, this means that this term can be uh, approximately simulated by using s times a plus e1. However, this forms a LW sample. Then by the LW assumption, this means uh, the secret LW vector s is hidden from this term. Then we can argue that uh, the ciphertext hides some information about the secret vector s. So by using the uh, randomness extractor, we can prove the message m is hidden from the authority. In our paper, we actually prove a stronger security notion, which is semi-malicious security. We prove this by slightly modifying the construction using the ideas from Praxky and Dalton in 2018. For more details, you can refer to our paper. For the authority's security, we prove it using the security of the uh, basis sampling. This uh, basis sampling algorithm can hide the trapdoor RF. Thanks for watching. For more details, please see our full paper.